Good evening, you're watching 7 Up 7, the only news bulletin where I curate the day's top seven stories for our viewers. I'm Preeti Chaudhary and these are the headlines. Aam Aadmi Party's Gujarat chief releases, released hours after detention alleges misbehavior by NCW chief. Kejriwal calls Gopal Italia's detention an insult to Gujarat's Patel community. Drug bench delivers split verdict in hijab case. Justice Gupta bats for ban. Justice Dhulia bats for freedom of choice. Case referred to a three-judge bench. ED files charge sheet against Rana Ayub. Rana Ayub accused of money laundering. ED charge sheet says Rana submitted fake bills. Received foreign funds without FCR in order. Kerala's holy city occult shame after cannibalism horror. Now a case of black magic on children emerges. Local stage massive protest. Saurav Ganguly makes his exit from BCCI official. Says he's ready to move on to bigger things. IMF lords Modi's government's digital cash transfer scheme calls it a logistical marvel, helping millions of poor in India. After incessant rain, flood fury wrecks havoc from Andhra to Sikkim cities and towns inundated rescue operations in several states. We are one month away from election, or rather a month and a half away from election. Massive escalation between the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Aam Aadmi Party in battleground Gujarat. The latest Gopal Italia, the BJP party president in Gujarat, uh, sorry, the Aam Aadmi Party president in Gujarat, was detained by the Delhi police from outside the National Commission of Women's Office. The NCW chief, Rekha Sharma, alleged that Italia stormed into her office and his supporters, which made her feel threatened. But uh, after his release, Italia alleged that it was Rekha Sharma herself who had misbehaved with him and hurled abuses. The Aam Aadmi Party convener and Chief Minister Kejriwal asserted that his detention has angered the entire Patel community. Remember, Italia had been summoned in connection with a video uh, where he used derogatory language for Prime Minister Modi. Two old videos of Italia had surfaced in recent days, one in which he criticizes Prime Minister Modi's niche politics and uses cuss words for his government, and another which he tells women that temples are breeding grounds of exploitation. He didn't give any answer to me, and I saw that it was very difficult for me. What are you doing? What are you doing? और क्या हैसियत है तुम्हारी मुझे ये कहा गया मैं शौक हो गया कि ये क्या भाषा है ये किस टाइप का इन्वेस्टिगेशन है ये किस चीज के लिए मुझे इस कमरे में इस ऑफिस में बुलाया गया मैं शौक हो गया मैं कुछ नहीं बोला क्योंकि वो चेयर पे बैठी है चेयर की रिस्पेक्ट करना सिटीजन की सिटीजन होने के नाते मेरा फर्ज बनता था मैं सुनता रह गया मुझे पूछा गया कि ये कौन लोग है जो बाहर आए हैं क्यों आए हैं इतने लोग और मुझे बड़े बद्दे तरीके से बड़ी घटिया तरीके से ट्रीट किया गया दो मिनट के लिए बहुत डांटा गया बहुत धमकाया गया ये कर दिया जाएगा पुलिस के हवाले कर दूंगी तुम्हारे ऊपर एफआईआर करवा दूंगी जेल में भर देंगे क्या समझते हो अपने आप को औकात क्या है तुम्हारी इस टाइप की बातें खुद मैडम ने अपने चैंबर में मुझे बताई मैं बीजेपी के सारे विधायक सेंटर के मिनिस्टर पूरा आई सेल एक ही छोटे से आदमी के पीछे लगा के रखा है क्यों क्योंकि वो लोग पाटीदार समाज से नफरत करते हैं और नफरत में इस हद तक गिर चुके हैं कि गुजरात से मुझे उठाकर ओखला के थाने में बिठा दिया यह जो पूरा घटनाक्रम है इसमें साफ साफ तौर पे बीजेपी की भ्रष्ट मानसिकता पाटीदार समाज के खिलाफ की मानसिकता का प्रदर्शन हो रहा है इन्होंने डिनाई किया कि उस वीडियो में मैं हूं ही नहीं लेकिन जब ये जवाब दे रहे हैं तो उस, उसमें इन्होंने माना है कि इन्होंने वो ट्वीट किया था जबकि पहले ये कह रहे थे कि वो जो ट्वीट में जो वीडियो है वो मैं नहीं हूं तो ये दोनों चीजें ही आपस में जो भी इनका स्टेटमेंट है और जो रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट है दोनों मैच नहीं करते अभी तक इन्होंने प्रॉपर जवाब नहीं दिया मैंने पुलिस को भी बोला है कि इनके अगेंस्ट एक्शन लिया जाए क्योंकि ये 
एक लॉ एंड ऑर्डर को खराब करने की सिचुएशन क्रिएट कर रहे थे इनके सपोर्टर्स ने जबरदस्ती अंदर आने की कोशिश की और मुझे लगता है इनफैक्ट मेरी दो बजे एक मीटिंग थी बहुत जरूरी जो अब डिले हो गई है सेंट्रल दिल्ली में और क्योंकि मैं बाहर नहीं निकल सकती थी मुझे अपनी लाइफ पे भी थ्रेटनिंग लग रहा था यहाँ सौ डेढ़ सौ लोग अगर पहुंच के मुझे थ्रेटन करेंगे तो ये किस प्रकार के नेता है ये कैसे कैसी इनकी वर्किंग है देखिये जो लोग गोपाल इटालिया को डिटेन कर रहे हैं उनके पास सिर्फ इतनी राजनीति है उनको स्कूल ठीक करने नहीं आते उनको बच्चों को पढ़ाना नहीं आता सत्ताईस सत्ताईस साल हो गए उनको सरकारें चलाते हुए उनसे एक स्कूल शानदार नहीं बना गोपाल इटालिया को इसीलिए अरेस्ट कर रहे हैं क्योंकि उनकी गोपाल इटालिया ऐसी पार्टी से आता है जिसको स्कूल बनाने आते हैं बाकी कुछ नहीं है बाकी ड्रामा है देर आर सेवरल वीडियोज ऑफ गोपाल इटालिया द चीफ ऑफ द आम आदमी पार्टी इन गुजरात इन विच ही इज सीन डेनिग्रेटिंग वुमेन मेकिंग सेक्सिस मिसोजनिस कॉमेंट referring to them as c he has also gone on to say that women who go for katha and to temples offer themselves for exploitation because those are dens of exploitation in such a scenario ncw summoned the gujarat aam aadmi party chief he went there with his supporters created ruckus so much so that the ncw chairperson had to tweet asking the police to step in otherwise people would have been harassed and assaulted in the ncw premise the police did what was appropriate all right viewers let's quickly move on it was a split verdict where the supreme court came on the hijab verdict uh, from here what happens now is going to be referred to a larger bench in all probability a three judge bench cheers more After 10 months of tumult and face-off, which ignited passion and legal fight, the hijab stalemate is here to stay. The two-judge Supreme Court bench has delivered a split verdict on if campuses can allow Islamic hijab over prescribed uniform. Justice Sudhan Shudhulia set aside the Karnataka High Court judgment and quashed the Karnataka government's hijab ban order on February 5. He held that the entire concept of essential religious practice was not apt for the dispute. Justice Dhulia added that only education of girl child matters. Justice Hemant Gupta on the other hand upheld the Karnataka High Court verdict which approved Karnataka government's campus hijab ban. Justice Gupta also raised 11 critical questions on the issues of essential religious practice, rights of students and the government dekhi aaj ka jo faisla hai jo verdict jo fractured verdict hai iska matlab ye hai ki iska prabhav high court ke judgment par kuch bhi padne wala nahi hai ab jo nayi bench gathit hogi naye bench ka jo faisla aayega usi se high court ka judgment prabhavit hoga agar wo faisla high court ke against hai to faisla nahi mana jayega high court ka aur supreme court ka jo faisla hoga wo manya hoga justice gulia has emphasized that the choice has been left to the to the lady she whatever she wants to wear she can wear so he has emphasized on the education of the girl he has emphasized on her choice and he has he has he has depended on the bejoyed manual judgment which which has upheld this uh, this uh, you know this practice where uh, where a lady can can put uh, whatever covering the cji while constituting the larger bench will have to consider all 11 questions raised by justice gupta and then decide upon the composition of the bench with no stay by the top court or the karnataka high court judgment and the supreme court being split the high court endorsed ban on hijab in campuses with uniform will continue hame ummeed hai ki yahan par abhi chief justice of india ke samne hamare jo bachche jo appeal dale hai wo kya hai hame aasha hai ki definitely wo hamare favor mein yahan ke samvidhan ke favor mein wo decision denge as the battle shifts to a larger bench a longer legal war may be on the cards two judges giving a split verdict in the karnataka hijab ban case from the supreme court which means that this matter will now go before a three judge bench and is likely to be delayed further while justice hemant gupta in his analysis has gone into all issues including essential religious practice and the right of the government to formulate rules justice sudhan shudhulia has said that this is not about essential religious practice it is about the freedom of expression and freedom of choice of religion and effectively it is also about 
education of girls, particularly in poorer rural areas. With the two judges giving distinctive different judgments, the matter will now be referred to the Chief Justice to formulate a fresh bench. In the meantime, in Karnataka, the ban on wearing of hijabs in educational institutions which have a uniform will continue as the government has made it clear that the status quo will continue for now. In New Delhi, with cameraman Raja, this is Anisha Mathur for India Today. I'm going to cut across to my colleague Akshita speaking with uh, Mr. Rovesi from the AIMIM who has expressed his views on the Supreme Court verdict. Joining us here on India Today is AIMIM Chief Asaduddin Oasi on what's played out in the Supreme Court as far as the hijab case is concerned. Mr. Oasi, good evening. What do you make of the verdict good that good came evening. in from the Supreme Court from Justice Gupta and Justice Dulia? Well, as, as everyone knows by now that they had two differing judgments. Yeah. We were expecting a unanimous judgment in favor of hijab, but the honorable judges have given their judgment with we respect. But uh, we still have one Supreme Court judgment in favor of hijab. Now that it is up to the Chief Justice when he constitutes uh, this larger bench or, or, or what the CGI will decide, we'll come hmm. to Mr. Ovesi, I want to read out one part of the judgment. This is from what Justice Dhulia said. He says, it may be the only way her conservative family will permit her to go to school. And in those cases, her hijab is her ticket to education. This particular part of the judgment opens up also a larger debate, Mr. Ovesi, about whether we're talking about choice, at least as far as Justice Dhulia's observations are concerned, or about a lack of societal reform. Well, you see... It is, you know, you, you can call anyone conservative and liberal, but I have a right to lead a life. That is my right. How I lead my life uh, has, 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 should have no bearing on anyone. If, you know, as far as I'm not getting a lot of a problem. But uh, if, I, if I'm a practicing Muslim, you can call me conservative, you can call me fundamentalist, whatever you want. I don't care. Because if I'm practicing my religion, following my religion, that is the right which the Constitution of India has given to me, Absolutely. and I am not asking you to be, and I am not asking anyone to becoming like to, to become like me. Yes, uh, quickly. Sidramaya has shifted into top gear on the road to Karnataka's elections, jogging with boss Rahul and sparing no attack. The former Congress CM has now opened his most aggressive offensive, targeting the BJP government and specifically the man who took his chair. B.S. Yadurapa. In a series of high voltage tweets, Sidramaya has scoffed at the BJP's Jan Sankal Pyatra, challenging both Chief Minister Bommai as well as Yadurapa to get down from their cars and walk for four kilometers without falling down and to do a five minute speech without taking the name of Sidramaya. More stingingly, Sidramaya has accused Chief Minister Bommai of using Yadurapa as a shield, making it super personal against the BJP veteran. Whose profile has seen a big boost in recent weeks. Sidramaya has also said that Karnataka's public will not forgive the BJP for rehabilitating Yadurapa. This is a campaign by the Congress party against this 40% corruption government. There is no government. There is no governance at all. All developmental works have come to standstill. <laughs> Sidramaya's aggressive outburst comes in the wake of his relatively amplified profile amidst an ongoing feud with party colleague and state congress chief DK Shivkumar, who's embroiled in enforcement directorate cases. The fresh flashpoint between the two mass leaders of Karnataka offers a tantalizing nugget to political observers. Both the Congress and BJP are unclear about the chief ministerial faces just seven months before the crucial election. While the Congress is harping on so-called collective leadership, the BJP is still trying to repair the flagging image of Chief Minister Bombay. Could this new collision between two enemy war horses be a sign of things to come? Or is it a case of Nataka Abhibaki here? All we can say 
इस नमस्कार ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे All right, moving on to the shocking murders in Kerala. The occult murders uh, viewers have left everybody stunned. And new information continues to tumble out. Here's more. Black magic, satanic rituals, occult murders for gaining wealth. Kerala's blood-curdling double human sacrifice has shocked the country. The three accused, Mohammad Shafi, Bhagwal Singh and his wife Leila have been sent to 12 days police custody after being produced in court. <laughs> The shocking case sparked massive protest. The Mahila Morcha of the BJP took to the streets in Pattanam Titta. Congress leader Ramesh Chenthithala pitched for a law against such heinous crimes. I feel that the government of Kerala should come out with a legislation. I request the state government to come out with a very strong legislation so that this kind of activities can be curbed. Human rights activists have demanded strictest action against the culprits. ऐसे घिनौनी प्रवृत्ति के लोग भी एग्जिस्ट करते हैं जो अभी भी बलि देने में विश्वास रखते हैं और उनका मांस भी सेवन करते हैं तो मुझे लगता है कि इससे जघन्य तो हमने कभी भी नहीं सुना और हमें लगता है इनके ऊपर तो कड़ी से कड़ी कार्रवाई की इनको तो फांसी की सजा होनी चाहिए And just when the case is unfolding, another shocking incident has come to light. In Pattanam Titha, where black magic was reportedly being used on children, one of them fell unconscious during the procedure. The residents protested against the incident and complained that the tantric threatens by hurling curses if anybody opposes her. The tantric has since been arrested. With Shibhi Molkeji in Kerala, Bureau Report, India Today. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Modi was in the state of Himachal Pradesh, uh, the state which is once again just a month and a half away from elections, announcing a number of promises and sops. The PM flagged off the fourth One Day Bharat uh, Express from Una to New Delhi. The train will run six days a week with stops at Ambala, Chandigarh, Anandpur Sahib, and Una. He also laid the foundation stone of the multi crore bulk drug park in IIT in Una district. As you're watching our fact check segment where we bust certain claims masquerading to be facts on social media platforms and WhatsApp group, there's a claim floating about suggesting that a temple in Birmingham was set on fire by Muslims. Uh, the fact check on that accidental fire in a supermarket in Birmingham.